Uh, this morning we're going to hear uh, about 3D OSM in your browser from Tobias. So let's welcome Tobias. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I want to tell you a bit about OSM to Word. OSM to Word is a piece of open source software that I'm maintaining for quite a few years now. And simply speaking, the goal of OSM to Word is to create 3D models from OpenStreetMap data. OpenStreetMap data comes in various forms, and OSM to Word supports a few of them, such as OSM files and various encodings and overpass API. It can also use elevation data, which is not part of OSM, but SRTM or other sources provide open licensed elevation data too. So I've described the mission of OSM to Word as creating 3D models from OpenStreetMap. In three simple steps, um, to create 3D models from OpenStreetMap, we need to store OpenStreetMap data in some kind of suitable storage, query it or pass it in order to be able to work with it. As a second step, we need to actually understand that data, the various tagging conventions that exist, and to build 3D models from it. And finally, we need to export it into the desired target format. Now, a big part of the idea of OSM to World is that the second step, understanding data and building 3D models from it, is actually quite a bit of work if you want to do it properly. So, for example, just rendering a 3D building by extruding the outline is relatively easy. But as soon as you start, for example, creating individual roof shapes and so on, which is all things that can be tagged in OSM, you need to actually write code that supports all of these variations. And part of the idea is also that this work is mostly the same for many different use cases. So, I mean, that's a step three to export the models into a desired target format. But the step two is very similar for all these different use cases. I mean, there are some other projects in the OSM ecosystem who also do 3D models from OSM, but they often focus on one particular output. So they focus on making the best for one particular gaming engine or one particular editor, one particular um, modeling tool or something like that. OSM to World tries to instead focus on the common functionality between all these use cases. As a result, it supports multiple output formats, and the goal is to add even more in the future. This includes, for example, a 3D model export, including in the OBG file format, which is very common in the 3D world and can be read by practically everything. It can do interactive rendering with OpenGL, and it can also render PNG images, again, with OpenGL, including for 2D map tiles. Um, just a few examples of things people have been doing with OSM to World include video art, so load them in Blender, apply some cool effects, and create a camera flight. Gaming applications like this, now quite old, Super Tuxcat version with uh, some racetrack created from OpenStreetMap data in it. And this, the isometric tiles that are available at maps.osm2world.org. Um, this has also been around for quite a few years now, and back then it was one of the first services that even let you see 3D OpenStreetMap data in your browser at all. The way it works is just creating the 3D models, making essentially virtual photographs from a particular angle and cutting it into tiles so that it can then be shown with open layers normally like regular 2D tiles. Um, back then, there wasn't really a perfect alternative yet, but nowadays this is very old technology, and the focus of this talk is essentially our current project to use WebGL, which is a technology that's not even all that new anymore, to render real-time graphics in the browser. So in terms of software architecture, the 
what we are doing before, it's essentially this. Practically everything happens on the server, including taking OSM data, creating 3D models from it, and producing raster images using OpenGL. This also implies that the server used to have, for example, graphics accelerator hardware, which is not the case for many servers that you can easily rent. And it also means that the server has a lot to do for each of these raster images, which limited the geographic coverage of the service. So what we want to do instead is to create the CG models still on the server, but to send the result to the client, and the client then handles the rendering using WebGL. Of course, this raises the question, why not do everything on the client? I mean, we could just send open treatment data to the client and, well, do the other steps in the browser. Um, there are essentially two reasons for not doing this yet. One is that the performance isn't quite there yet, so creating the 3D model takes a lot of time, relatively speaking, and this is something that doesn't really make for an interactive experience yet. The other is that osm to world is using a software stack that's not particularly suited for this kind of setup, so it's something that I want to eventually be doing, but at the moment, this is the intermediate goal. Okay. Um, originally, my intention had been to like be able to show a working version that's already published and launched and everything. This didn't get quite done in time for the state of the map, so I only have a prototype to show you, but still I want to give you an impression of what it's currently like. So um, this is a 3D rendering of Passau, which is where I'm living. and. Yeah, as you can see, this is rendered real time in the browser. So you can, as you would expect, like move the camera freely around wherever you want it to be. And you also get an immediate impression of some of the benefits. Like for example, this animated water wouldn't be possible with the old technology. You have quite a lot of details that actually were always there, but weren't visible. Like, I mean, you can zoom in on the sports pitches if you want far more closely than would have been possible with the old technology. And there's a lot of things that osm 2 world does besides buildings like rendering roads with lane markings and so on and crossing. We place randomly uh, located cars on parking spaces and so on. This kind of detail is actually something that osm 2 world want to do and that's now really actually possible to do in the browser. So I'm quite happy about that. We'll be coming back to that later. Um, but I want to show you it's not just working in my town, it's also working elsewhere because people have been doing 3D mapping quite a lot around the world already. These are all rendered with the same technology that I showed you before. Um, I really like those details, like the stadium in the background where people put really a lot of work into details that yeah, are now finally possible to really appreciate with osm to world um, One reason why I'm showing you, for example, this last slide here is um, this Eiffel Tower model. This is not something that you can realistically do in open street map data, so instead I'm not even trying. There's a platform called the 3D model repository at this URL, um, and you can upload 3D models there and link them from open street map, and osm 2 world will then place them in the correct position based on these links. This cannot only be used for unique landmarks, it can also be used for things like street furniture, so for example, if there's a particular type of park bench or bus shelter or something like that, you can also model this in Blender or SketchUp or something, upload it and link it in all the locations where it exists. Okay, uh, back to the theory for a moment. Um, this is the diagram I showed you before. Um, as you can see, we are sending 3D models through the internet. So in order to do that with reasonable bandwidth requirements, we need to encode these somehow. And the option I've gone for with this is 
protobuf ties with a custom protobuf schema. Now, using a custom format instead of one of those that already existed isn't an easy decision, and it's something that will probably change in the long term for compatibility reasons. But for now, it allows me to iterate more quickly, and it also allows me to do some of the things that OSM to World is using particularly heavily compared to other clients. This includes, for example, texture layers, including colorable texture layers. Um, with OpenStreetMap data, you have a lot of variation. So, for example, you can, for each building, set tags that describe the color, the material of the building, and so on. And these can be combined freely. So, I mean, you can have various materials like plaster or brick or glass, and you can have arbitrary colors too. And these need to be able to be freely combined. And the way this works is that the building geometry is only transmitted to the client once, along with a list of texture images that should be pasted on top of that geometry, and the client is then responsible for displaying this accordingly. This is also something we can see in the demo. So you can see that the buildings have various colors and so on, and these are essentially the same material plus a color value that's transmitted to the client and then used to display the buildings correctly. You can also see, like, down here on the road, there are road markings which use the same concept. So you have an asphalt texture, which could, depending on the tags, also be a concrete texture or a cobblestone texture or something like that. And you have these road markings drawn on top, which are freely combined with any of the other types of surface below it. Okay. Um, while we're talking about texture data, textures are usually, including in OSM2 World, raster images. So they're PNG files or JPEG files. But we can also use vector graphics for textures now, and we can also use procedural textures. Ones that's been recently added are text textures. So, for example, in this traffic sign, the text, the number five, isn't actually part of the image, but it's written by the client on top of the sign, which is very useful for signs that have a lot of different possible text. So, if you imagine, for example, one of these signs that are posted at the entrance when you drive into a city, then you wouldn't want to create an individual image for every city on the planet. Instead, you just look at the OpenStreetMap data and look at the value of the name tag and write the name onto that sign as needed. This was actually added just this summer during the summer of code by Yason. And he also added a lot of other future features related to a traffic sign. So for example, destination sign rendering, but also the ability to define traffic signs, how they look in a particular country, without having to change the source code of OSM2 World. So this is something we would also like help with. So if you want OSM2 World to render your country's traffic signs correctly, you can do that without actually having to change the OSM2 World source code, just by editing our map style. There are also a few other features, like deriving traffic signs from other tags, like max speed tags. That's optionally possible now. So uh, if you haven't already, I recommend you read Yasan's blog post about this, which are quite informative. Another feature that's now done on the client instead of the server is extrusion. osm to world makes heavy use of extrusion, which is essentially the concept of defining the cross-section of a shape and then drawing that shape along some open street map way or some other kind of path. So this water slide is created by extruding the water slide cross section along this open street map way that someone has mapped. And this is done on the client. So we don't transmit all the individual triangles making up this model. Instead, we just transmit the much lower amount of data for the cross section and the path. Uh, this is another example of what we do with shape extrusion that I would also like to show you in the actual client a bit. Let's go over here. So if you look at this, 
um, we wouldn't really want to transmit all the triangles making up this uh, bridge railing, for example, uh, to the client because that would be a lot of data. This also hints at one of the things we actually would still like to do before this is launched, which is uh, work on performance optimizations. At the moment, we don't really have a concept of level of detail. This means uh, all these details of this bridge railing are rendered even if you're far away from it, which is not ideal and which uh, has negative effects on the frame rate that's currently possible. So this is something we are still working on at the moment to have dynamic level of detail depending on how far you are away from an object. Okay, there are three other optimizations we've done with a format like instancing. So if there's a tree, we don't send the full geometry of the tree for every single instance of it. Instead, we just tell the client, this is what our trees look like, this is a list of places where trees are, and the client then just copies the trees wherever they are needed. This is also used for parked cars and railway sleepers and many other objects where there's only one or a few variations of the object. We also have a few other optimizations that are also quite common in other graphics contexts like index geometry and variable length encoding of coordinates, which is made easily possible by Protobuf. This is a list of things we have been thinking about, have been working on even, and some of these things actually work in OSM2 World already, but not in the client yet. So for example, the terrain elevation is something that OSM2 World itself can do, but we won't add it into the client before the first version is launched because there's still a bit of work to do to actually get that to uh, yeah, look good and run smoothly. Other things like additional light sources or animations already work to some extent. And yeah, some features that would also be cool is of course simple indoor tagging support for seamless indoor and outdoor buildings or even adding a VR mode, which is also not that hard nowadays because many frameworks actually have that built in to an extent. Okay, so that's it. I hope you liked it and you will be staying tuned for the actual launch of the program. For now, I'm looking forward to your questions. Thanks for your attention. Excellent. Okay, we have a couple of minutes for questions. So when I saw your list of output formats, my, what immediately popped into my head is GLTF is becoming more or less the standard now for models. Are there any plans to make that a possible output format? Um, I've not worked on it yet, but it definitely would be one of the most uh, likely candidates for additional formats in the future, yeah. Questions? Yes, I see that uh, uh, the online uh, pages are limited to Germany. Um, sorry? Online uh, images are uh, limited to Germany. I don't see images uh, for uh, foreign countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this is one of the limitations of the current technology because the server has so much work to do to render these images uh, on the server side we actually haven't been able to support more than like Germany and a few adjacent countries yet. So this is something I hope will be possible with the WebGL client because it drastically reduces the server load so that we might actually be able to support eventually the whole world. I'm hoping that this will be possible. Any other questions? I guess I have a question. I'm curious uh, if you're going to have terrain support or if that's something you've thought about for elevations and such mm -hmm. within cities. Um, this is something that osm to world itself has to some extent. Uh, so it allows you to 
place a folder with uh, SRTM data, for example, and it will then use this to actually render terrain. Um, there are a few challenges if you want to actually have it look nice. I mean, for example, you don't want the roads to be placed like on the side of the mountain. You want to actually make sure that the roads are still flat and that building entrances and so on are at ground level. So until these details work as I would like them to, for the moment I'm keeping it flat, but of course eventually we want terrain because it's an essential part of the 2D experience. Yeah. Uh, do you think with uh, enough performance optimizations you might eventually support like a light source, a sun and shadows and stuff or would that, is that unrealistic for WebGL in the browser? Um, I mean, I think a light source is relatively easy. So think like normal shadows and uh, ambient occlusion and things like that I believe will be easily feasible. Um, I'm not sure yet if we can also do lots of light sources, like having each uh, street lamp actually uh, emit individual lights, but um, think like just having a dynamically located sun depending on time of day and that, that is, I believe, easily in the realm of the possible. Um, a continuation on the, on the terrain one of the local shopping centres has um, is built up against the side of a cliff. Hence, you have a door at the at one ground level. Then five levels up, you have a door on the other side, at, also at street level. It would be really good if that could be rendered. Um, I didn't quite get the beginning of the question. Um, one of our local shopping centres, shopping mall, is built up against the side of a cliff. So you have a ground level here. The building is here, and then you have an exit at another ground level higher up. Mm -hmm. Being able to render that in 3D would be really fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it depends a bit on how it's mapped. I mean, if it's mapped as a single building, then there yes. are definitions for what the gr how the ground level is defined in terms of the simple 3D building tagging scheme. Uh, if it's multiple building, then it's difficult because um, it means that, that it relies on the terrain being accurate enough to like, line up the neighboring buildings correctly. And because the terrain isn't actually from OpenStreetMap but from some other data source, it's likely that it won't pit, uh, fit perfectly with each other. So um, I've always kept these kinds of problems in the back of my mind and I hope that someday we will be able to like, add tags that allow me then to uh, uh, adjust the elevation correctly, but for now this yeah. just doesn't work or it's down to luck. Yes, with, yeah, for, for now with 3D mapping, I've basically stuck to flat places. Mm. <laughs> okay, thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Okay, let's thank our speaker again.